<clears throat> Hold on. Sound like shit. How you feeling? A little sore, but uh, I'll be all right. Are you okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I've been through worse. Jesus, how fucked up is that to think, huh? Listen, Alex, my systems are acting up a little, so I've got to get checked out. But if you want to meet or what? No, no, no. I'm fine, man. You just take care of you. This girl's built tough. Give me a call when you're useful again, okay? Talk to you soon. Open blinds. Good morning, Adam. You have one new message. From? David Sarif. <sighs> Play it. Adam, it's David. I know it's been a while, but uh, after what happened in Prague yesterday... Look, son, whatever reasons you've had for not getting in touch these last two years, well, life's too short. I'm leaving for London soon, but, uh, give me a call. You saved his vid call number? Yes, Adam. Just activate your TV system. Adam Jensen was caught in a terrorist attack. An hour, 30 hours later, and we wake up in his apartment. Adam Jensen tries to recollect himself. He seems like he has some problems with his augmentations, and now he needs to take care of that. The thing is that in the world of mankind divided in 2029, two years after human revolution, and there are a lot of problems in society, a lot of division, a lot of tension, and a lot of companies like the Limb Clinics that are focusing on transhumanist technologies are going bankrupt. And now Adam Jensen will have to rely on some underground stuff. So Adam now is fresh, he smells good, he's clean, he's almost ready to go into his new adventure. But before, we're going to look around a little bit his apartment. And through the SX style, there are plenty of things to discover. There are a lot of readables, pocket secretaries, ebooks, computers, where we can learn about Adam Jensen's motivation, the organization he's working for the state of the world. There's also a lot of emails that he can read, some of his colleagues at Task Force 29 asking him to go see them, etc, etc. We're not going to show all of the details today in the apartment, but for instance, uh, here we can go onto the television, we can watch the news, or you can even call back your old boss David Sarif, and that can unleash a totally optional mission that is not part of the critical path experience. But for today, we're going to focus on the main adventure and go out in the open. Miller, it's Jensen. It's good to finally hear from you, Agent. You doing okay? Sorry about the downtime. I'll get to the office as soon as I can, but my augs took a hit during the attack. I need to get them looked at. Of course. There's a lot of work ahead of us, Jensen. I'll see you when you get in. Dr. Kohler, I need to pay you a visit. Jensen! Now's actually a really good time for me, like right now! Something wrong? There are some guys in my bookshop. Pissed off the valley gangster looking guys. So, unless you want bloodshed the day after a terror attack... The front door isn't the most peaceful option. I got it. So it seems Jensen's friend Vaclav Kohler has some problem with local mobsters. We're going to go shortly to see what's going on there. But in the meantime, we're going to look a little bit at the city. 
here we're still in the apartment complex where Adam Jensen lives. Of course, we can explore all the apartments and uh, discover loot, discover story about a lot of things. Now we're in the city hub itself. We're in the poor district of Prague and there's a lot of augmented people living in that district. As you can see, there are a lot of police forces looking around and making sure that everybody's staying in check. There's a lot of paranoia, there's a lot of tension. License permit, voucher, document of authority, temporary pass, travel coupon, and or certificate of authenticity. Good old days, we just asked for ID. Good old days are gone. <laughs> Haven't seen one of these before. Orange level. You are some kind of badass? Just someone with a job to do. And the tools to do it, obviously. Go on through. Fortunately, Adam Jensen has his papers in order but he's still an augmented citizen and there's no discrimination on that end. Like police are going to check everything and make sure that you're complying to what's needed. Because in this world, police are just looking for an excuse to send you to some ghettos. Here we can see the metro station. It's another example where the uh, segregation is institutionalized. We have the natural line and also we have the uh. augmented line to take the subway. If you take the line for the naturals, chances are that the police are going to ask your papers and they're going to arrest you. But if you use the line for augmented citizen, you'll be able to breeze your way through and get to the district you want to go without being bothered. And through the SX fashion, you can talk to all the characters in the world. You can learn more about their own stories, about some of the things happening in the world. You can also get some hints about certain places, etc. So it's up to you to discover all these things. Now we're getting close to our friend Vaclav Kohler and we're going to show you some of the options to get to him. There are always more than one way to get Don't where we want to go. The There's a blockade here, let's see what it is. Doc Lari! Doc Lari! Show me latest papers, otherwise you cannot go through here. I know the drill. For the sake of this demo, we just shortened this conversation. But basically, what you discover is that those police officers want you to pay some fee to go around and, and get to your destination. As you go and explore that side mission, depending on how you play, it can be a very short uh, story that can last maybe 10, 15 minutes. But you can dig deeper and deeper and end up into a story that can spawn for over an hour and you discover that those fake police officers are extorting uh, augmented people that are out of hope. And you'll be able to make a difference. We're going to look at the right side of the police blockade and it seems like there's another path so let's explore it to see what it is i would have found him street is off limits or your buck private function all businesses are temporarily closed it seems that those guys are the the valley gangsters our friend uh, kohler was talking about so since we don't want to create chaos here today we're going to look for another option in Mankind Divided, we really wanted to expand on the exploration aspect of the game and verticality is a big part of it. And as you see here, there's an apartment upstairs with a flickering light and there's probably a way to get there and also to go around the blockades that we've seen and maybe get to our friend without disrupting the peace in the city. That's an example on how we can exploit uh, the verticality. There are objects in the world that we can interact with and now we're able to reach higher ground. Depending, however, of the augmentations that you have, you might be able to get there without the use of the environment. So depending on how you build your Adam Jensen, how you decide to exploit his capabilities, you'll be able to get in places in different ways or not at all. As you can see here, something happened, and that is a story that we're not going to fully explore today. But as you play the game, you'll be able to understand what happened with those people. Hacking is back. 
like in Human Revolution, you have to Anomaly go from detected. one end of the network to the Trace other end. Initiated. But this time around, security systems have more protections that you have to overcome, like booby traps. But also as a player, you're going to have more Access softwares granted. to use to try to circumvent the challenges. I can tell you that this time around the gameplay is going to be more tactical than it was in the last game. So it's going to require a little bit more skills to hack uh, some of those networks. But let's continue to our friend Kohler. And yes, Adam Jensen loves air vents. Exploring all around and all in the little corners of the map is really important because you can find a lot of loot, a lot of secret things. And here, for example, we have a pocket secretary. We're not going to open it today, but it's just to show you that those little devices have codes, passwords, things like that, that can allow you to get to secret places that otherwise would be more difficult to reach. So now we have passed our friends the Davali mobsters and also we passed around the police blockade and now we're getting close to our objective. This is the Time Machine, it's a book shop that is owned by Vaclav Kohler and now his Davali friends are trying to find him. The thing is that he's hiding uh, somewhere in his building and uh, now they're trashing the place, shooting everywhere, trying to make him come out of his hiding because apparently he owes them money. This is the smart vision. You can see the weapons enemies carry, the loot they have, if they have pocket secretaries, the kind of ammo they have. So it can be really interesting if you're the kind of tactical player to, to know which ones are more interesting to take down or not, depending on your playstyle. So today we're not going to pass through the main door because we don't want to start the fight right away. We're going to stealth our way around with cloaking. I was talking about verticality, so it means that when you fall from higher ground, you make more noise and enemies can hear the noise you're producing. So even if you're using like here, the cloaking, even if they don't see you, they will hear you. So it can be a very good idea to combine different augmentations together to have an added value. So in this case, not only you're totally invincible, but people cannot hear you at all. So you're the perfect stealth agent. Takedowns are back, lethal or non-lethal as always, but this time around now you can perform them from cover. We avoided the main entry point to get to our friends, so there's the delivery entrance here, but the door is locked. We're going to look for another option to get in. It seems that we have a, an opening on the roof. And what is important is that when you get to a location like Color Time Machine, there are always more than one way to get inside. Looking at your environment is really key for your success. Now we're using the Tesla gun arm, which is a new augmentation that Adam Jensen has, that allows us to take down enemies non-lethally. And when you fully upgrade this augmentation, you can take out up to four enemies at once. It can be really interesting, especially if you're a non-lethal fighter. I love cats. Here, the stun gun. As you're going to see, it has a similar effect as the Tesla gun arm, but it shoots one single bullet at once and you have to be at very close range to hit your target. So depending on your gameplay style, you might want to invest in the gun arm or you might want to keep those practice points for other augmentations and rely on the stun gun. So it's really up to the players to really craft the Adam Jensen they want. Here we could have gone through that bookshelf that is on the side and we could have climbed up to the second floor. But for today's presentation, we're going to take a different path. We just use the silenced pistol, which can be very deadly and very quiet. Here's another gun arm, the nanoblade gun arm, allows you to throw the nanoblades. 
and you can kill very quickly and without too much noise enemies. And also you can have an upgrade that allows you to really charge the nano blade and once you shoot it, it's going to explode after a few seconds and you can take down several enemies at once because it has a 360 effect. We're getting closer to our objective. And now we just use a toxic gas grenade. And everybody in the radius of the grenade is going to be affected. This guy has been lucky until now. Fortunately for this demo, Adam Jensen had the augmentation that protects you against it, otherwise you would have suffered from the same consequences as our Devali friends. Now we're in Kohler's office. Apparently the mobsters looked around, but they didn't find the secret spot to find Kohler. Jensen, thank God. I'm down in the dungeon, man. You remember the title of my super secret book, right? I remember it's red. Earlier on, I was talking about readables in the universe, and here we have another example, newspapers. There are different stories that you can discover, and some of those stories can be influenced by what you achieve yourself in some side missions or even on the critical path. Here, our Devali friends forgot to look at this weird red book. It seems that Kohler loves augmentations quite a bit. Here's Kohler's lab. And I was talking about exploration earlier. There are always secrets to find. And here you have another example. Jensen, my favorite techno wonder kind. Sorry about the goons, man. They, uh, they didn't give you too much trouble, did they? All because a few rich opportunists plotted in secret to control us. Today, hatred of Augs has morphed into a full-blown mechanical apartheid, with violent clashes fueling unrest. The Augmented are suffering a genocide. It begins with taking away our rights, treating us as less than human, and then exterminating us. Something big is brewing, and I need to cut it off at the source. How can these people always be one step ahead? They've got unlimited power and money and absolutely no conscience at all. That's how. They manipulated the dawn of Human 2.0. Made it dangerous. Made me. I'm going to use every advantage I have to stop them. My advanced capabilities convinced Interpol to recruit me to their counter-terrorism task force. Despite objections within the team, I'm willing to endure their prejudice, so long as it furthers my hunt for the true threat. Not gonna go all wonky on us now, Hansa. Are ya? If I do, McCready, I guarantee you'll never see it coming. Turns out my military-grade enhancements were hiding a full set of cutting-edge experimental logs. You're telling me I got more implants than I thought I did? More than your body can handle. Meaning my ability to infiltrate, fight, and circumvent has now grown exponentially. Right along with the increasing threat level. Being stationed in Prague places me at the epicenter of terrorist activity. And with blame for the latest atrocity being leveled at an augmented group there, the only certainty is that the body count will keep rising. Our territory is fiercely defended. No one sets foot in there. The task force wants me to bring Ark's leader to justice, dealing with his augmented army as I see fit. Starting my investigation by interrogating Talos Rucker on the realities of his non-violent approach could prove beneficial. Every floor of their towering complex is packed with armed militia and filled with high-end security. But its makeshift construction provides me with plenty of options. 
Going in full force and guns blazing may result in casualties. But if I want a strong arm Rucker into surrendering, it makes sense to use force. Engaging them with modified firearms, explosive nanoblades, and using my Titan shield to negate their counterfire as I roll through like a reinforced tank. I have known exactly the kind of thug you are since the moment you entered. If Ark had no involvement in the bombing, it might justify going in like a ghost, hacking their security systems, using the architecture to my advantage, delivering concussive blasts via the Peps gun, and relying on the Tesla's electrified projectiles to avoid any unnecessary deaths. A lack of casualties would be a show of respect to someone like Rucker, and might just convince him to peacefully turn himself in. Faced with two terrible choices, I choose the lesser evil. I will come with you. But he and Ark represent just one facet of my hunt for the truth. And I'll need to keep tracking down leads and making contacts on both sides of the law if I hope to uncover the true motives behind these escalating attacks. It's not always about doing the right thing, or about doing things the right way. Intel gathered from allies outside the task force has me questioning everything, including the true intentions of my own command. If you're meeting with Miller, be careful. You walked into another ambush, and Miller's not off the suspect list yet. Everyone's got their agenda, meaning I'll have to trust my gut when dealing with suspects. How far are you willing to go to help out a friend in need? Whether I'm working by the book or going rogue, choice never comes without consequence. What's the going rate for cops in Gollum City? You're making a very dangerous assumption. The clock is always ticking. And unraveling the mystery on my own terms may be the only way to prevent disaster. There is a moment coming, and it will be soon, when all of us will have to choose a side. As anti arc conflicts become a global concern, Prague represents just one square on a giant chessboard whose pieces are continually manipulated from the shadows. I have to choose my allies wisely. Reminding myself of the greater cause. The elite may obscure themselves in darkness, but the truth is still mine to reveal. I don't care that they only speak in whispers. I won't let them have the last word. I used to know what tomorrow looked like. Before the world split in two. Everything changed then. Including me. Agent Jensen, am I going to have a problem with you? No, sir. No reason to assume you would. They made me what I am. A high-end weapon. Now, they want to put people like me in a cage. Hunting the elite who thrive in the shadows takes more than just a man. You're not gonna go all wonky on us now, Hansa, are you? I guarantee you'll never see it coming. It takes a weapon who chooses to believe. A better future is possible. If I can survive long enough to see it. Nice work with the train, Chang, but we got another problem. A bomb scare. Can't get into Tarvos until it's resolved. I've been to that office before. They're in the middle of building an access area connected to the station. I'll be breaking into the offices of a security company. Think they'll thank me for identifying flaws in their defenses? Yeah, probably not. The Tarvos officer had a high-tech device on him. The kind you'd need a lieutenant's blessing to use. I'll speak to the lieutenant here. See what he knows. Heart? 
only represents a small portion of the level that you're playing. And we're not going to show any of the social. First thing we're going to do here is we're going to start by picking some augmentations. And for the purposes of how we wanted to show it off right now, we wanted to show off a more aggressive approach. So we're going to play this first a little bit of stealth predator and then combat to get in. Now. According to our intel, the Kingpin's office is backstage. You might find something there. So as I said, he's heading into this section which is controlled by this criminal organization, the Diwali, and he's got to get inside that theater. First, we're going to look around a little. We're marking our enemies here so that we can keep track of them as we go through the level. But as you can see, there's different approaches we could take, different side. Uh, we could have gone off to the left. We could go straight through and really take these guys on if we want. But we're going to go a little bit stealthy at first here. And we're going to go around to the left. And you can see the cloaking augmentation is back from the uh, first game. And that allows us to sneak around and, and really look for different ways to get into that theater. There is no loyalty. Deus Ex is, of course, all about exploring the environments, looking for different paths to get to your objectives. And this time around, we've really played with verticality in the levels. So not only is it, you know, finding the paths and events on your ground level, you want to go up and you want to look up and be aware of all these different entrances and ways to get in. And in the process, by exploring more, you're going to find lots of goodies that our level designers have hidden and scattered around the level for you, like this sniper rifle here. Again, you can see all those different paths and even up above all the different routes that we can take. And if you're familiar with the smart vision allows Jensen to see through the walls and, and it's very useful in planning your attacks. Here we've suddenly seen that one of the thugs has spotted his fallen comrade. So we're going to take him out using a new augmentation that Jensen has. His nanoblade can now be shot. And as you saw, we didn't even have to switch weapons. We now have his gun arm, and there are a couple augmentations in his gun arm, and we can use it while we still have our weapons. So it's a very fluid and dynamic experience for you, and it doesn't break your immersion as you're going through. I get the feeling you're not with me. Could not be interested if I tried. Right? So our objective, without giving away story, is to get inside this theater, which is, you know, the kingpins of this family. It's it's their headquarters, and we need to get to a specific hmm? office that we're looking for. Sorry, wasn't you? We're gonna go in, and we're gonna start combat right off the bat from up here. Worst part is that she just thinks I need. So that was the Icarus strike. We really put a lot of work into the combat for this game to make it a lot more visceral of an experience and make it as rich and fun to play as the stealth usually is. That's another ability with the nano blade. You can charge it before you shoot it and it will explode and that's very useful to help you take out enemies who are behind cover. Multiple enemies at once. We also can now dynamically switch our ammo in-game as we're playing. There we switch to armor-piercing bullets, so it helps us to take out the robot very quickly. There are different ty types of ammo that we can use. They're all good against different things, or stronger against different things. We just saw Adam activate his Titan shield. That's a new augmentation. It basically allows him to absorb a lot more of heavy fire and turns him into something like a human tank for a short period of time. It also looks really cool in game. But you see, now we're going in through the front door, which we could have done earlier. It's all about finding the paths that you want to get to your objectives. 
and see, as you can see, there's vents in the game. We could have come around back and snuck in if we didn't want to go all combat. And it gives us an opportunity to explore and pick up various items. We also got things hidden in the world like the readables that you'll see in a minute that will tell you more about the world. Things like newspapers that by reading about reading the newspapers in the game you can see a lot more and learn a lot more about the factions, the things that are happening. This is another new augmentation, the wireless hacking. So there's one of the newspapers I was telling you about, scattered throughout the game. And the hacking game is back, the regular hacking game, but we have upgraded it this time. It's got now booby traps that are in there. We've got things like fog of war going on. And there's a whole new array of software that you can find in, in the level that will help you to become more of a master hacker to support that level of the gameplay. So by hacking into this, this was a security terminal, so we're able to actually access some of the cameras. We can turn them off. It'll make our route through a lot easier without triggering alarms. We can also, you'll see the robots. Uh, we, by hacking a security terminal, we can control the robots. We can make them friendly on our side. You can also hack computers to find emails and read about things that are going on in the world. So here we're going to go up above again and take another look around at areas we hadn't seen when we dropped down. We do have the punch through wall that is back, enabling us to make our own pathways. And of course the takedowns are back. You can now do the takedowns while in cover without breaking your cover. So you don't have to worry if you're playing stealth that by doing a takedown you're suddenly going into combat. the Icarus Dash. It allows you to access very quickly different levels, either through vertical jumps or through horizontal ones. And so here we can get up above, we can plan our strategy as we're going through, see how many guards are down below. It is really all about playing the way that you want to play the game and planning your strategies. So we can actually find out where they think we are and we can plan our stealth and go back in and, and really flexibly switch from combat into stealth as we want. 
that on. So here we got four more enemies. We have another gun arm, the Tesla gun arm. Again, non-lethal. You can use it to shoot between one to four enemies and take them out non-lethally with an electric shock. And you can also use the Icarus Dash to really ram your opponents and knock them out and get rid of them. So that gives you a sense of some of the new augmentations and new abilities. Here we are, we're reaching our objective for now, but like I said, we don't want to... Adam Jensen is back, international covert agent working for an anti-terrorist task force. This time you will play a seasoned Adam that is more empowered than ever with new possibilities such as new augmentations, weapons and tools. He represents the human 2.0. Adam will also be playing a double agent role as he believes that the task force he's working for is being manipulated by the Illuminati and his goal is to take them down. Oh, oh, sorry. oh excuse me, I'm very sorry. Damn clank. Here, let me help you with that, ma'am. Ma'am? Seriously? I could have gone with Sweetie. You get my message about Dubai? Yeah. I'm glad you're all right, Adam. That ambush sounded pretty bad, man. Well, that's something I was expecting, that's for sure. Any idea who it is? Well, I'm sure your task force will come up with something, and that it won't be what the Juggernaut Collective digs up. Kinda of odd though, don't you think? Interpol sending your team, the Brad team, to Dubai in the first place? Miller said they were scrambling. Last minute intel. We were the only strike team available. Yeah, well, that's why. Better get moving. The Collective has been keeping tabs on all task force divisions ever since we slipped you into one of them. We've got a team in Oman. A lot faster than you guys. So why send us? Oh, no. The task force is an Illuminati front. We all suspect. It doesn't make much sense to send it into an ambush. Unless they wanted the team to see something. Officially. I can see. dream of it, Alex. I swear it's gone even worse here in the past few days. Everyone looking over their shoulder. Terrified odds like us are going to attack them again. Somebody probably will. Treat people like animals long enough, they'll start acting like animals. Just say that like there's nothing we could do to stop it. I already tried two years ago. It didn't work out so well. So what? Are you saying we should just give up? Let hatred and prejudice take over? To hell with that! I'm saying I can only go after enemies I see, Alex. The men who caused all this, the true power brokers, they're the ones I need to stop. I thought you knew that. I do. You, me, the Juggernaut Collective, we're all trying to stop them. It doesn't mean turning a blind eye to them. Then help me find them. about Dubai, about the Illuminati needing your team as witnesses, then we need to find out why. 
gave you the order to mobilize? Miller did. But it probably came from someone higher up the chain. Doesn't mean he's not in on it. Ever heard of the NSN? The neural subnet, sure. In TF-29, directors use it to plan ops and communicate privately in cyberspace. What's this? Whisper chip. Custom-made wiretap device. Janus designed it to fit inside the NSN's motherboard. Ah, the elusive Janus. The leader of the hacktivists. Am I ever gonna meet this guy? Someday, maybe. Right now you need to concentrate on Miller and find a way to access the NSN's motherboard. pissed enough to end this guy yet. I got a no-kill order. Is that right? Who'd have thought he'd done enough to warrant extreme prejudice? How far out are we? Coming up on it now. Not many spots I can set her down. Got a preference. Get as close to the ground as you can. I'll take it from that. Whatever you say, boss. Deus Ex Mankind Divided is an action RPG mixing several gameplay pillars, combat, stealth, hacking, and social with deep choices and consequences, wrapped in a heavy narrative. You can play the game any way you want. You can go stealthy, full combat, or a mix of both. You can finish the game without killing anyone if you choose. Chicane, I'm in Ark territory now. That flyby show you anything? First section seems to be a mass storage area. View I had looks like Ark has repurposed it for living quarters. Or barracks, maybe. Those two things have very different connotations, Chicane. Which is it? Well, everyone in front of you is armed, so I'll let you decide. Right. Today we're going to play stealth at the beginning of our demo and showcase some new possibilities. You'll notice we just picked up a case of EMP ammunition. We support different ammunition types in Mankind Divided, each of them giving you an edge against certain challenges. In this case, to eliminate the camera, we'll want to use an EMP ammunition bullet type. This part of the presentation only represents a small chunk of the entire map. It won't showcase our social hub environment or the exploration that will be present in the final game. Did you hear about Talos? Hear what? They say he's been drinking a lot lately. You were him? We're responsible for not only everyone in art, but also the entire old course. You, would you can complete your objectives the way you want, and it's key to observe and explore the environment in order to find new passages or rewards. You could even encounter some characters that will provide you more information and will help you. In this area, we could have gone down through the cafeteria, entered some barracks, or gone upstairs. Deus Ex fully supports multi-path and multi-solution approaches. Yeah. Huh? Do you think the police will try to come in here? No. Not after what happened to them last year. They have training, we do not. Just stay calm. If anything happens... One of Adam's new augmentations is the non-lethal Tesla gun arm. You can target up to four enemies at the same time. You can also dynamically switch between your weapon and your augmented powers. This allows a fluid and empowering gaming experience. Here's another new augmentation, the Icarus Dash. It allows Adam to reach new areas, even to ram and knock down enemies. 
It provides more freedom to the player to explore the environments. For the sake of this demo, energy, life, and ammo are infinite, and the code presented is alpha. Nothing is final, and the game will be even better at the end. The remote hacking gives Adam more exploration and alternative paths. You can disable or control robots and cameras with it as well. Here's the first look at one of our new augmentations, the Nanoblade. It can be a very effective weapon, as you'll see here. Maybe this NPC needs to stick around for a little while. Our Hacking 2.0, which is enhanced with more possibilities, such as booby traps, new softwares, new challenges. Jensen, I'm not bothering you, am I? Working my way through maintenance shafts. Thought it was best to stay out of sight. I didn't ask. So you're calling to ask if you're bothering me? Coffee's on the brew, just killing time. Also, I spotted an elevator. Looks like it reaches the upper units. Might get you to our man. Or you could just stay in the air conditioning. In a Deus Ex world, we're constantly reminding you that we have multi-paths and multi-solutions to every challenge. In this case, this is a huge environment. We could have come from down below. We could explore by going to the vent across directly us. Here's another example of what the nanoblade can do. It can also be used as an exploding device, perfect for taking out combatants hiding in cover. In the previous Deus Ex Human Revolution, we knew that our combat pillar wasn't quite on par with the stealth one. This time around, we put a lot of effort and energy into making the combat pillar as visceral, rich, and a fun of an option to play as the stealth one. We've added in Adam's arsenal the Titan Shield. This allows Adam to become for a short instant a human tank and face heavy fire. Take 
We have much more possibilities now with weapon customization on the fly. You can change your ammo type or even upgrade your weapon to fit with your playstyle. Here we've used an EMP frag grenade to disable the turret and armor piercing bullets to destroy it. Moving in on Rucker's position. You got those coordinates yet? I'll transmit them as soon as I've finished my coffee. Don't leave me hanging, Chicane. You just worry about getting our man. And be careful. He's dangerous. We'll see. As Deus Ex Mankind Divided is also about meeting deep and rich characters, we pushed our social boss fight system in order to make it more dramatic and credible. We worked on the body behaviors, facial animations, and the all-around staging. I'm sure you'll understand if I don't take your word for it. As the customary final request of the condemned man, please, do not kill any more of my people on your way out. Their only crime against you is their loyalty to me. You don't seem surprised to see me. I'm not. After the train station attacks, I knew it was only a matter of time before they sent someone. Please, sit. This isn't a social call, Rucker. I'm here to take you in. Our mandate is to fight for the rights of the Augmented. Communicate our message, offer assistance. The Ark is a non-violent organization. Going into this social debate, your choices will decide the outcome. All right, then this should be easy. Come with me, answer our questions, and we'll have you back here in plenty of time to film your next sermon. I'm not a fool. If I surrender now, I'm never coming back. Once you have me, you intend to make me disappear. But I will not make Sojourn's mistake. My people and I will resist you. I thought you were a pacifist. I am. But I am more than a leader. I am a symbol. That is why you wish to erase me. If martyrdom is the only way to remain a symbol, then even my death is preferable. If I have to bring you in by force, I will. And your people will try to stop me. And neither of us wants anyone to get hurt, so come along peacefully. You have my word. I will do everything I can to see that you are treated fairly. You cannot speak to me of peace or fairness. Not when your masters hide in the shadows, manipulating, controlling, murdering without the courage to proclaim their convictions in front of the rest of the world. Come off it, Rucker. You've been preaching pacifism for years from your ivory tower. Now all of a sudden your convictions are really being tested, and you're tossing them away. No, that's... Permit me to frame this in words you will understand. If you take me from here, you will be murdering me, perverting the cause, and destroying the Augmented Rights Coalition!
Permit me to return the favor. Come willingly and prove you're a pacifist, or resist and prove you're full of shit. You are the one perverting the cause. You presume to question my pacifism when you attacked innocent people to get in here. I will not dishonor the cause by giving in to you. Ever. There's one last thing. Before you drag me out of here against my will. What motive could I possibly have for committing the atrocities I'm accused of? With every incident, the gap of fear and hatred that divides Augs and non-Augs widens. Who really benefits when innocents die? Allegedly in the name of Og rights. That's a good question. And a dangerous one. If you ask it too loudly in this place. Somewhere down there, hiding in plain sight, is your real terrorist. I was trying, secretly, to find out who is responsible. Rucker? A lot of heat coming through the door. I need a way out now. You fucked it, didn't you? Now she came. Relax, there's some greenhouses near your position. Below them is a clearing. You can't miss it. Already on my way. She came out. Here, we failed the conversation with Rucker, so that alerted the guards, which will make our escape more difficult. If we had won the conversation, the alarm never would have been triggered, which would have allowed you to have an easier escape, and Rucker would have given you his stash key card in order to get important information. Oh. Now that we fully engaged combat, we will show some of Adam's augmentations, such as the focus mode or the Pep's gun arm. Here's an example of our new focus mode, which basically slows the game down or speeds Adam up, depending on how you want to look at it. But it allows for some amazing results. This isn't a social call, Rucker. I'm here to take you in. My people and I will resist you.
Innocent people died in that bombing today. The augmented are suffering a genocide. It begins with demonizing us, treating us as less than human, exiling us so we are forgotten, and then exterminating us. You're getting pissed enough to end this guy yet? I got a no-kill order. Who'd have thought he'd done enough to warrant extreme prejudice? How dare you speak to me of peace and fairness? on behalf of masters who hide in the shadows and murdering without the courage to proclaim their convictions in front of the rest of the world. I suspect there's a power struggle brewing within our organization. Some people inside Ark are less committed to our ideals. Then help me find them. Somewhere down there, hiding in plain sight, is your real terrorist. I can only fight enemies I see.